If you have watched my video before, you might already know I'm enjoying 3D modeling, making my own upgrade for 3D printers, making some functional tools on my shop, and also some interesting toys. I'm putting most of my work online for free so more people can enjoy it. Free doesn't mean it's low quality and less time effect to put in there. I actually run a lot of test print and make a lot of design revisions until I meet my own standard. One of the biggest challenges to me is how to manage my workflow and complete my project within a time limit. I am currently using Bamboo Lab printers to do my design prototyping because of its printing speed and printing quality. I could get a few design reversion done and get those test prints running on the same day. It was simple and easy to manage one or two machines. After I increased more machines to meet my productivity demand, it started getting harder for me to manage all the machines. Recently, Big Tree Tech have released their Panda Touch that is specifically designed for Bamboo device. I want to thank you, Big Tree, to send me this device. And maybe I can use this device to improve my current workflow. Let me briefly introduce this Panda Touch to you. This device looks like a simple touch screen upgrade that is dedicated for Bamboo Lab printer lineup. Indeed, it is a very nice touch screen upgrade. Beyond that, its core features allow you to control up to 10 Bamboo Lab printers. You are able to control individual printers' motion. More importantly, you can use this device simply to control all your Bamboo Lab printer at once. You can mirror the printing profile and let your printer perform the same printing job at the same time. Let me walk over the setup process of this device with you. I think many of you thinking this product in turn to upgrade with a stock screen on a P1P or P1S. Let's install it on the P1P and see how it turned out. Within the box, Panta Touch comes with all the necessary accessories. First, attach a monitor bracket to a screen bracket. There are two terminals on the bracket that could charge your panda touch. Attach a USB power supply cable on the bracket. Make sure your printer is powered off when you plug in the cable. This USB cable on P-series rate 5 volt with 1.5 amperes maximum current rating. Within maximum operation current of 0.5 and 0.7 peak of the Panda Touch, it should be safe to do that. There are some cable clips on the printer frame. You can secure the cable here. Remove the double side tape cover. Clean the surface where you want to put it with isopropyl alcohol. Carefully place it where you want to be. The double side tape is a bit too thin. It does not hold well on my printer. You can add thicker double side tape to make it stick better. Let's power out the printer. Wait a minute, don't forget to turn the power switch to DC 5V side. There we go. You will need to connect the print attach to your Wi-Fi. Next page will allow you to add a printer. You can manually add those required printer information in. But the easier way is just using a scan feature to add your printer. Make sure your printer is turned on and it's under the same Wi-Fi network. Scanning might take around 20 to 30 seconds. If you want to connect all your Bamboo Lab printer at this step, you can turn them all on. After selecting one printer, 
it will automatically add the required information for you. You will still need to put in an access code. You can find your access code under the setting, select WLAN. Access code is located on the fourth line. Confirm all the information. You are successfully connect your printer. The entire menu layout is very similar to the Bambula X1 carbon screen. All the features and functions are straightforward. The first icon is a home page. By clicking on information on the right, we can jump into the second icon. You can see a lot of commands here that could directly control to your printer. Under this page, you are only able to control the printer that set as a master. We can now add film information over here. Third icon is where you can find all the printing files you store on a printer micro SD card and a USB drive you connect to the Panda Touch. You can change some setting from the fourth icon. The last icon allows you to change the connected printer setting. You can add some more printer in. Printers previously scanned still shows here. Let's add them all in. For the A1 and A1 Mini, go to the setting, select LAN only mode menu. If nothing is displayed, try to enable and disable the LAN mode only switch. It will refresh the page. We have now adding all the printers in. Sometimes you may encounter printers not able to connect due to the IP addresses change. You can update the IP address information on a Panda Touch or go to your Wi-Fi router settings to assign your printer on a fixed IP addresses. There are currently four different modes you can assign your printers at. They are master, slave, sync, and disconnect mode. You are required to have one printer as a master, and you can only have one printer assigned to that. This printer current state will be displayed on the second menu. If you select one printer as a slave, it will then follow all the commands you send to a master printer. When you set a printer to the sync mode, there will be an independent machine that does not follow a master printer. When you switch your printer to disconnect mode, all the commands from a Panda Touch won't send to there. Let's plug in our USB drive and see how it performs with the multi-printers. After we select the printing profile, all the connected printers will be displayed here. You can select each of them to perform bad leveling and time lapse and other features, just like how you did it on a slicer or mobile app. There is something you need to pay attention when you're slicing the profile from the slicer. Unlike directly sending a profile to the printer from the slicer, if you are selecting the wrong printer on the slicer, you won't be able to send a printing profile to your printer. Since you have slide the printing profile and store in a USB drive, when you are sending a printing profile to a different printer from Panda Touch, even if the printing profile you are sending is not comparable with that machine, it will still allow you to send it. So when you have a A1 mini profile sliced and mistakenly send it to a P1P, it will still allow you to do so. And then you'll see this happen. I have test X1 carbon profile will work for both P1P and P1S as well. But it will not work on A1 and A1 mini. If you only have one machine like P1P, or you have a multiple P1P, you don't need to worry about this. But when you have a multiple different machine like me, this is something critical to pay attention to. Otherwise, you may potentially damage your printer. You need to pay attention not to overload your circuit. 
one printer is around 350 watts during the initial heating process. One 15 ampere circuit might only able to save to heating five printer or less at the same time. We have explored this basic workflow for this Panda Touch. I think it is great addition upgrade add to your P1P or P1S if you are looking for a bigger touch screen like the one on X1 Carbon. Compared to another screen upgrade alternative like X-Touch, this Panda Touch costs a bit more money, but it is come with a bigger screen and more features. You may have already known Bambula announced their future plan. They may stop the MQTT compatibility for third-party device, but they also have mentioned that there is a future plan to work with a third-party developer and open their API and SDKs. Big Street Tech officials have made a video regarding this potential issue. They have also mentioned that they will continue to monitor all the beta firmware. They will also send out alarm if the future firmware upgrade on your Bambula printer will have comparability issue with this pen touch. That said, if you don't upgrade your firmware on your printer, it will just work fine. And also worst case scenario, you can turn this pen touch to clipper pad, which Big Tree Tech have already announced this news. There's also some shortcoming on its feature at this point. If you are working on a project consists of many plates, Panda Touch will only recognize the first plate on the entire file. You might need to split your build plate project into individual files and store to a USB drive. You are currently not able to send the file directly to the front the slicer to this Panda Touch. So there is an extra step of work for you to store the file on a USB drive and plug into this device. You will also need to pay attention to the printing profile comparability things that I have mentioned above and purposely test above. So you won't potentially cause any issue with your printer. As it currently at the early release state, there are a lot of features that are working on, like assign different printers to different groups, adding support to GCO file, adding thumbnails, and more. Big Tree Tech is well known for their bold product, and there's an engineer team behind this product to give a support and update. And I'm excited to see more features in the future. I think this is good enough to stop here for this video, and I'm still working on exploring and adopting this product into my design workflow and improve my productivity. I hope I'll come up with some more new findings and I can share with you guys in the future videos. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon.